In our lecture with Dr. Patrick Forber, he showed us how social interactions could be studied using certain game theory models. He threw some pretty common words at us like altruism, selfish, and cooperation, but the way he explained it using these game theory models is what I found most interesting. Two of the theories he explained to us were the stag hunt and the prisoner's dilemma. In both these models, a two-person interaction is used to study how social interactions might come about. In one of the models, selfish and altruistic behaviors are studied. In the other model, cooperative, non-cooperative relationships are used to see how certain interactions might come about. So here's how these two models play out. In the prisoner's dilemma, you have two people who commit a crime together, a minor crime, but the police have arrested them for what they believe is a major crime that they've committed. So they want one person to rat the other one out. So each of the two prisoners has two choices. They can either be silent and not rat the other one out, or they can talk and rat the other one out. So the first choice they have is for both of them to stay silent. If they both stay silent, then they both get one year of prison each. Now if prisoner one stays silent and prisoner two decides to talk, then prisoner two will go away with no years, prisoner one will be left with a three year sentence. Same goes for if prisoner one talks and prisoner two stays silent, then prisoner one goes free and prisoner two is stuck in jail. The last scenario is if both prisoners decide to rat the other one out. If they do, then both of them will get two years of jail time. So in this scenario, if they both decide to talk, then they're both accusing each other of a major crime and thus would spend more time in jail. Now in the stag hunt, you have two hunters who have to decide whether to cooperate or not cooperate on their hunts. If both hunters decide to cooperate, then they're both able to kill a stag each. So their net gain is two stag for working together, which is great. But now if one person decides to cooperate and the other one decides to defect, then they aren't able to kill any stag and the defector would be able to kill a hare, and their net game would just be one hare, which isn't that great. Same goes for the other way. If the first person de decides to defect, and the other one decides to cooperate, then only the defector would gain the hare, and the cooperator would walk away with nothing. But now, if both of them decide to defect, then each of them would be able to hunt one hare each, and their net gain would be two. So in this scenario, it's either better to cooperate with each other or both defect. If they both cooperate, then they're able to kill two prey, same with if they defect. But if they cooperate, they're able to kill the bigger animal, which in turn would be a better decision. One of the things we discussed during this lecture was whether these interaction theories could really be used to study human interactions. Because they are both idealized models of how two individuals would interact in a given scenario, it's hard to determine if these models would actually play out the way they do. Since there are so many different influences that can affect an outcome, it's hard to see how these theories could relate to the real world. Say for example in The Prisoner's Dilemma. The two prisoners in the game have a relationship, but the game never explains how far that relationship extends. Do these two people really like each other? Are they best friends? Are they siblings? Or are they just acquaintances that one might actually not like the other, or vice versa? These factors would all play into how the two prisoners would respond to the cops. Another version of this game that I really like is the Golden Balls. In this TV show, two complete strangers face off to see who will win money. They're given two options. They can either steal or split the prize. If they both split the prize, and they walk away with half the winnings. If one splits and one steals, then the stealer would win all the money. But if they both steal, then they walk away with nothing. So in this scenario, the two players must talk to each other and discuss what their outcomes are gonna be. Are they both gonna steal or are they both gonna split? There can either be one winner or two winners. And it's up to them to decide what that outcome would be. I really like this game because it takes into account all the different things that could influence two different people. And in this way, it takes into account how relationship might actually affect an outcome of a game.